video, I'm going to show you how uh, I create rapid prototypes for demoing uh, apps and stuff. Okay, so if you want a video on how to make normal websites, uh, which are like web safe, then this video is not for you because um, uh, this video shows you how to make rapid prototypes that you can show off by Beamer or on your laptop or something else. Um, which really is, is just optimized for your own browser and your own laptop and your own resolution and stuff like that. Okay, so um, for school I need to make a lot of projects. Um, and in this project we need to like create concepts and stuff. In these concepts we need to like create a concept of a, about an app or an application or something else by a fictive uh, client. And we need to like um, uh, do everything like uh, from the concept to the to the design to the art to the interaction um, and a basic demo. And uh, on the last part, I'm I'm focusing right now. So we've created an app already for a fictive client in a very specific context. It's an app that you run on a tablet um, while while watching a, a TV show. It's called Second Screen. And uh, we need to design an app for a specific TV show. So that's what we did. Um, so we created the concept, we did design, we did a lot of other stuff, but now we need to make a working demo. And um, I use that by building websites, a lot of other um, classmates and stuff use um, like Adobe Fireworks or other or Flash or something to really quick make something, mess something up. And I'm doing using a website, so using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, and I'm mainly jQuery because it's so fast. Because you can write stuff so fast in it. Okay, so um, now design is complete. So I have like a, a PSD file um, some teammate made, and it consists of all like like uh, layers of the uh, the different states of the application. And I need to simulate this using uh, uh, using the website. So for example, this is like oh, I have to check it out. Um, which one is currently on right now? This one? No, this one. No. This one. Okay, so this is, uh, now it's not working at all. Let me see. Ah, so this is this is one state. Uh, this is the other state. And th this is another state, I think. Not sure. Well, this consists of all the states. So I made a mashup already. I'm just going to show you how I did it. So this is a website. Um, and you can click on everything just like it says in the PSD. And you can also click on this one. This is the home uh, state. And I made this really quickly, like in an hour or so. Uh, in including the timers, which aren't showing now. So these timers tick off. And um, I haven't done anything with that when they when they run off. But I've uh, got them myself. Um, which, uh, but the main idea is that there are like three different um, tabs of the app. And when this timer runs out, we go to this tab. And if this run, timer runs out, we go to this app. And uh, it depends on the TV show because it's linked to the TV show, of course. So, um, so what I, when I started off, I, I used HTML5 boilerplate. So that's on GitHub, um, which I don't really file. So I have all the files and the, the folders and stuff, and jQuery is loaded already in. So I can just start coding. So I. Uh, uh, the way I do it is using Git. I download it using Git. So I go to the folder I want. Let me select the folder. Um, so say I want it in, in htdocs, which is folder created by my local web server. So I just cd there. And this consists of all the projects I'm working on. And if I want to create a new project, I just say git clone the link. Oh, not this one. This one. The git read only. You can also just download it, the zip file, and extract everything, but this is faster for me. And if I do it wrong like this, one second. Okay, so, um, and then I, I I named the folder I want it to be named. So uh, if, if the project is called um, Holidays, then uh, I'll type here Holidays and create a new folder called Holidays. Which the content of the entire HTML5 boilerplate. And the HTML5 boilerplate contains like jQuery and Modernizer, and uh, which I don't need at all because I'm only using it on my browser and and I test everything. So, uh, uh, but yeah, that's, that's really simple. So you can just comment it out or delete it. Okay, so I did that and I've already created uh, this, uh, this thing over here. So uh, when I started, I uh, yeah I created the title. It's nothing much. I uh, removed a lot of comments, which isn't necessary at all. You can just leave them. And then I created like a new div in the body called iPad. And if you check out the CSS, 
Let me see where I start. There is a bunch of predefined CSS for like resets and stuff. Which I guess isn't really necessary because you use... Where is my... Because you use uh, your own browser so you don't have to reset anything. Because you know how it's going to render. Um, but still it's it's easy because it also has like helper classes so for image placement and stuff. So at first I created a diff called iPad with ID iPad. And I just uh, centered it and made it a resolution of an old iPad, not a new one. That's good enough for our uh, project. And uh, I use just like this, like background red to, to check if it's if everything is working and stuff like that. Um, and then I made like this top bar and this bottom bar are, are like two diffs and the content bar is of the content diff is in the middle, so three diffs. And this one is the one I'm changing all the time. And I'm just adding times in, 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 in this bar. So I'm gonna show how I did that first because I did that to start. So I created the diff uh, footer. Um, with an empty span with a class called timer and I, I gave it like a data data start attribute which um, I, I've, I've done this myself so you can name it whatever you want you can do it however you want because I've written all the JavaScript that isn't that much for the timer um, and that's over here so that's where I started I started with this function called update timers and this is gonna update a second, uh, every second. So every second is gonna check the second. It's, it's pretty slow at the moment because it's doing a dumb lookup every time for every timer. It, you should you could cast those in JavaScript yourself, but off DOM. But this is not necessary because it's just a prototype and it shouldn't it doesn't have to be optimized. This is way faster to write. Um, so I have the the function, which is a second. I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then I set the set interval for the update timers. And it, it's on 200 milliseconds, so that it, it should be like this should go in seconds, but it, is, it goes faster right now because it's not a thousand, because it's a millisecond. A thousand milliseconds is one second, so if we do it right now, then it. Yeah, it goes by a second. Um, by the way, everything is in Dutch, but it shouldn't be a problem because all the code is in English. I guess the names I use and stuff. Most of the names I use. Um, so this is the first thing I did, and the function is pretty, uh, I'll put this on my blog and the link is in the description, so if you need a timer function, which you probably don't, then you can use that code. Um, but, but basically I'm just splitting the part, uh, this part, uh, the, the two part and the 30 part, and then I'm calculating those, and um, if, it's a, if the second is not zero, then retract one from it. Oh, if it is, uh, no, min left. Oh, that's when the, everything is, uh, I commented a little bit, so it's, when I read it, when I have to read it again, like right now, then I can just read the comments and it's lots easier. So when there are sex left, then it just removes a sec and then it's gonna rebuild this. Next time it's gonna parse it again. It's really slow, but uh, slow to parse and slow to render and stuff, but it's really fast to write, so that's why I did it. Um, but this was like pre pretty pain because there was much more exceptions than I anticipated. So therefore, uh, it took longer than I thought. So for, for things like this, it's probably easier to just like uh, Google a plugin. So jQuery timer plugin. Check if that. Okay. And that's probably way faster. But I thought this was really, um, okay, let's see if it's, you got like a demo somewhere. Well, I guess you can go, oh, where it is. Demos, it's not working. Well, you can Google those, and if, if you can't, you can just write them. It took me like 10 minutes or so. Um, so every, everything I do here is based on speed, and because the, the demo, often uh, often I need to do in like a weekend or so, a couple of days, so, uh, and this is like the, the basic stuff. Because on the second phase of the app, stuff needs to be moving and animating and stuff. And there are lots of variations and comments need to be added randomly by random people. Which is all simulated, of course, and it's all client side and such. I could even write it in, in Node. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Depends on what we want to simulate and what we want to show to the client. Um, so, yeah, and for this part, what I did, I just made, uh, I, I just went to the Photoshop file. I selected the state I wanted. Uh, I'm not doing it really good right now. This needs. So let's say I want. This is a state, with, and this this means that the button is activated. So uh, this is a state. So I just made a picture of this. I sliced it, I cropped it, and then uh, I put it over here. And uh, to make sure you can press these buttons, I just made like empty diffs, um, which are over here. 
So the whole foreplay ID, yeah, foreplay is a face. It's not my ID, by the way. Um, it's a face of the uh, of the of the application. And every every uh, and always when it's active, and I'm gonna do that with JavaScript. It's now hard coded, but um, then everything needs to get shown. So I have that over here. So all this all the stuff, which is this is really slow, by the way. For for uh, CSS lookups and stuff like that, but it works for the prototype. So uh, so every time it got the class active, I'm doing all the stuff for everything, um, and I'm just giving a class uh, for for every picture. So so I made this picture, I made this picture, I made this picture, which is like the whole screen. So this guy, it's it's just different pictures. It's really not good, but it works. So whatever. Um, so what I did, I made those pictures and I made a class, of I added the class to active. So when foreplay has got a class active and home, then it will show that picture. So I can also do that with. So now it's got swim, and if if it change it to home, the the the, the thing changes. Um, so now I need to change those classes based on where we click. So what I did was I made uh, empty diffs with data part. Call the name of the class attached to the picture. So let me if I can make it a little bit more clear. So there are empty diffs exactly above the buttons, floating above the buttons, which are invisible. But you can click them and you can select that with JavaScript. And how I do that is also really simple. It's on the bottom, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I um, f item is the class that every button has. F item, and then um, when I click on an an item. Then uh, we're gonna select foreplay, which is the div for the whole thing, which has the class attached to it for all the different pictures, and remove all the classes. But there's only one, but I don't know which, so it's easier just to remove them all. And I add a class with part of the one that I click on. And it's really simple. It's, it's like three lines, I, I think two, um, and there, and then th th that does the whole interaction. Yeah, I need to like. Um, I need to position everything with CSS, so that's a little bit. But that's not a pain, even because you can use like Firebug or the how is this called? The developer tools to like. Uh, so if, for example, if this one needs to get a little lower, I just like this, and I and that now it's it's so it's really easy to and really fast, I think at least. And I can also do like more advanced stuff, which isn't really possible with Flash. So, for example, this is what's your favorite video? And then I, yeah, I got it working really fast. We just googled something. This is not a real content. This is dummy content. Um, but I can, yeah, because it's just a Flash video. I, I went to the website. Can I click on the website? No, I can't right here. We had to, the website in the documents. I, I just click on it, and um, it has like an embed feature, and I can just embed it over here. And the way I, how I hide it on default is really simple. It's just with CSS. So it's, let me see. In foreplay, we got like this embed thing, and on default, yeah, on, on default, it, it's in a div with the ID JSON. So everything, every embed in the, in the ID JSON is gonna get hidden. And then when it's active, the foreplay, because there are different modules, and we only want to show the video when this is active, and when the favorite video is active, that is page, which is controlled by the class. So we can just check active swim, uh, which is only this is only going to be selected while um, while we're on this page or on this. So if we go to after party, which is impossible right now, then it should always be hidden because it's, this it should never get the display block. And then I also this also needs to get the class active, which is also really easy. It just select the div. If you click, if you click on it, add the class active. So there, bam, and now it's get it's get. I'm not sure when it gets loaded and stuff, but I don't care because it's just a prototype. Um, so yeah, that's about it, I guess. Um, I'm I'm gonna do more stuff and more interesting stuff, and maybe I'll make a video of that. I'm not sure yet. And uh, so you can check it out because that's more more of a challenge because stuff is moving, and I need to add comments. But I also need to add comment over here. I need to make this part dynamic. Now it's just a picture, but I can just create a new div. I'm not sure did I make the div already? I, I don't think so. Oh yeah, I need to hide this, but it's, uh, it's, it's in automatically. I can just create create a new div with uh, with overlays this stuff because I don't need even need to remove those comments from the picture. 
We don't have to make them the slide in from the bottom. I already got the effect, I think. Let me check. A similar effect which I can use. So I'm not really writing lots of lots of stuff. Just uh see the characters, there it is. This is an old Oh shit, here's life version. I hope it's still up. Yeah it is. So oh so yeah, I can just mimic this effect. It's not really, you can see there, it's a little bit buggy because it slides in really different and uh, but I can use this, this is good enough for a demo. Um, which is also a pretty simple code, like, oh, it's minified over here. See the characters. Let me uh, check the code. Oh, I don't got it anymore over here. Now I got it somewhere. And then I can just search it and uh, because I think everything is minified over here. This was playing out with the HM5 boilerplate. And if you're gonna make like optimized websites, you should really check it out. It's really great. It's even great for me, and I don't even need optimized websites. But because all the files and jQueries load automatically, so you don't have to like uh, search for the CDN and stuff. And uh, so this is pretty, pretty great. Uh, this is really uh, very little code, as you can see. And it does everything like. Uh, this is probably backend, I'm not sure. Well, never mind. Okay. So um so that's it. So if you have any questions on how I do stuff, uh, just ask.